Out of the night that covers me, black as the pit from pole to pole, I thank whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul. In the fell clutch of circumstance, I have not winced nor cried aloud. Under the bludgeonings of chance, my head is bloody but unbowed. Beyond this place of wrath and tears looms but the horror of the shade, and yet the menace of the years finds and shall find me unafraid. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishments the scroll. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. Invictus by William Ernest Henley, 1875. What's up, good people? I am Dr. Shanta D. Chapman, your facilitator on this Finding Faith in Total Darkness journey. And I'm sending warm greetings to wherever you guys are in the virtual space today. I'm really excited that you guys wanted to kick it with me today and I'd be able to share this journey with you because I'm not gonna lie. It can be pretty tough staying positive and keeping the faith during difficult situations. Trust me. I've experienced and still experience those same feelings, trying to figure out where you're going to go to for advice. No one seems to be saying the right things, and it can be pretty discouraging at times. But trust me and listen to me, my friends, things most definitely get better. And I'm pretty sure you're thinking, well, Dr. Shanta D, how do you know and how long is this going to take? <laughs> I'm so glad you asked. God told me. Now, I'm pretty sure you're thinking, okay, you got a direct phone number to heaven now? And uh, no, but, well, well, sort of, all right? Stay with me. Stay with me, people. I have not lost a patient yet, all right? In this particular course, we're going to learn how to address those difficult situations by leaning into God's word and standing on his promises of seeing us through with his grace and his mercy. All right. So if that sounds like something that you're interested in and you're ready to take this journey with me, then keep on watching. Now, one thing you're going to learn about Dr. Shanta D. Well, Let's be honest. A couple of things you're going to learn about Dr. Shanta D is that I like to have a strategy or a game plan for any situation that I am uncomfortable with or that I'm not familiar with. All right. And luckily for us, I've constructed that game plan for us today for being able to help us find or keep the faith in any difficult situation that we encounter, all right? So let's get into those five steps right now. Now, step one is very crucial, and you wanna make sure that you have a notebook and pencil handy, or you're probably gonna be taking a lot of notes. But step one, acknowledge the thing, all right? You've probably maybe heard that thing before. Anytime you're going through any kind of situation, you want to make sure, especially if it's a difficult one, that you're acknowledging how you feel in that particular moment, all right? Whether it's the disappointment of not making the grade that you wanted on an assignment or a test at school, the fallout of a friendship, you finding out that that special someone doesn't like you back, or just simply something didn't go the way that you plan. You wanna make sure that you acknowledge how you feel with when those things come up and when those things happen in your lives. You ever heard of that phrase or that expression that it's okay to cry, right? It is, it is truly okay to cry. I mean, there, there comes a time in everyone's life where things simply just don't work out. And it's okay to um, acknowledge how those disappointments and those letdowns make you feel, all right? And it's even okay to cry. But the thing is, you want to make sure that you don't let those um, temporary situations, those temporary letdowns deter you from the possibilities or the true outcomes that come about with God on your side 
being able to bring you through those particular situations, all right? Now, like I said, you wanna make sure you have you some pencil and paper handy because I have a few scriptures that help us with acknowledging the thing. So, in Proverbs chapter three, verses five through six, they read, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will and all that you do and he will show you which path to take. All right. Now, also in Matthew chapter five, verse four, Jesus tells us that God blesses those who mourn for they will be comforted. And in Romans eight, chapter 28, Paul tells us that, and we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and who are called according to his purpose for them. So good people, God is telling us, listen, I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, they're going to come some times in your life and they're going to come some things. They're going to disappoint you. They're going to knock the wind out of you. You know, uh, people going to disappoint you and let you down and all that stuff. But be of good courage for I am here. All those things, all those bad things you think that are going on in your life, they're working for your good. I already got your back. I got you, boo. Let me do me and you do you. Acknowledge the thing. I understand how you feel, but I got you, all right? So we wanna make sure with step one that we acknowledge the thing. It's okay to feel sad, but don't let that sadness stay too long, which leads me to step two. Intercept those bad thoughts. So we're acknowledging the thing from step one and we're feeling our feelings and it's really easy for those negative thoughts to try to creep in and wreak havoc in our minds you know planting those seeds of self-doubt so you got your oh you're not good enough scent oh no one likes you and all of those negative things that try to further throw you off your game but you have to take charge of those thoughts and reverse them before they even start, all right? We have in Proverbs chapter four, verse 23, and you guys will learn that I love me some Proverbs, all right? Another thing you'll learn about Dr. Shantanee, she loves Proverbs. And it's some really good stuff in there, y'all. Should check it out. All right, and I'm reading from the Easy Read version this time, all right, which says, Above all, be careful what you think because your thoughts control your life. And there you have it, there you go. So if you dwell on those um, things and only focusing on what went wrong in that situation, then you start to manifest those negative things in your life. And you most definitely don't wanna do that. Like who, who wants to always focus on the negative? No one. All right. Now, when I was in high school, it is really hard to believe that I've been out of high school for almost 15 years next year. Man, time like literally flies, but I digress. So when I was in high school, I had a friend that was negative Nancy about every single thing. I mean, everything. <gasps> oh, oh, I don't want to be, be here. here. Why do you look like this? Oh, everything's a And it got to the point where hearing the same complaints day in and day out that me and some of my other friends were like, Okay, enough's enough. We get it. You don't want to be here. But instead of always focusing on what you don't like, what gets on your nerves, Whatever you have issue with, can you find something that makes you happy, happy enough to get you through the day? Because girl, we are literally getting tired of you complaining day in and day out. And don't nobody wanna be around you if all you're gonna do is complain all day. You get it? Let's try to do better. Love you, though. 
It was after this reality check that she was able to see how her negative thoughts and comments were impacting the connections around her and she wanted to change that narrative. So remember, check those thoughts when they try to pop up. Let them know, nah, son, we going in the opposite direction with this one. You're not about to have me out here stressing over things that I cannot control. And you'll learn it a lot when you get older that don't stress over things that are out of your control, but that's another discussion for another day. Okay, step three, heal your mind through God's word. Now you wanna pay close attention to this step because it requires a bit of writing and research on your part. Now, part of intercepting those thoughts comes with throwing God's word at those thoughts. Now in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, and I'm reading from the Easy Read version, Paul tells us to don't change yourselves to be like the people of this world, but let God change you inside with a new way of thinking. Then you will be able to understand and accept what God wants from you or for you. You will be able to know what is good and pleasing to him and what is perfect. Now again, Paul is letting us know that God, being the all-powerful being that he is, only wants what's best for us. And that requires us being able to change the way that we think. We can't no longer rely on what we usually do to try to help get us through because clearly those things aren't working for us. So we want to make sure that we are trying to figure out a new way of thinking. And the only way that we can do that is by, again, leaning into God's word, throwing those positive affirmations, those positive scriptures at those bad thoughts. And again, Paul is letting us know in this verse that God wants us to know or needs us to know that his thoughts are not our thoughts and his ways are not our ways. So we have to trust and believe that he's got us because he does, all right? So keep that in mind. Always keep that in mind. God's got our back. He wants what's best for us, and he's gonna make sure that he sees us through. Now, it may take some time or a little bit of practice to get used to, but that's where the changing your mind to a new way of thinking comes into play. All right, so start equipping yourselves with some positive affirmations or some positive scriptures from the Lord. And I'm going to challenge you to actually start writing some of these affirmations or scriptures out and posting them in areas that you are always viewing, always looking at your bathroom mirror, the fridge, the front door, the back door, your car, inside of your notebook covers, anywhere, everywhere. All right. And, you know, I used to have a friend. I still have a friend named Noelle who I used to kind of look at sideways when I saw that she had a lot of sticky notes around her. I used to say, girl, you, 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 you need you all these sticky notes, notes in your in office? Sis, yes. Because these situations be trying to try me out here in these streets and I need them to know that I am not the one to play with. Needless to say, that is one idea that I have borrowed from Noel. If I can come back to God's word and stand and affirm his promises over my situations, I can most definitely stand firm in those situations and not be shaken or move when anything tries to come my way. And I believe the same thing for you, my friends. Look through the Bible. Crack that thing open. Check out the Bible app. Figure out a translation that works best for you and find scriptures that really speak to you and encourage you. Write them out, post them on the wall and ask God through prayer that he comes in and renews your mind and he be able to allow you to experience his promises over your life and through those difficult situations. Step four, trust that God sees you and is already making a way. So we've already established that God only wants what's best for us. So know 
that he sees us and he is already making a way. He has never left us. And that's why he sent his son, Jesus, to help us and to encourage us. And John 16, 33, Jesus tells us, and I'm reading from the New Living Translation, I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. And God further affirms this when he tells us in Isaiah chapter 43 in verses one through four. And this time I'm reading from the easy read version. He tells us that he is always with us. He says, Jacob, the Lord created you. Israel, he made you. And he now says, do not be afraid. I have saved you. I named you. You are mine. And when you have troubles, I am with you. When you cross rivers, you will not be hurt. When you walk through fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not hurt you. That's because I, the Lord, am your God. I am the Holy One of Israel. I am your Savior. I gave Egypt to pay for you. I gave Ethiopia, Ethiopia and Seba to make you mine. You are precious to me and I have given you a special place of honor. And I really love this part right here where it says, I love you. That's why I am willing to trade others to give up whole nations to save your life. Did you hear what he said? Did, did, did you hear what he said just then? I love you. I have given nations. I have given up nations, everything, just to save your life. Now, who wouldn't trust and believe in a God like that to save us when we go through troubles, knowing that when we go through our tribulations here on earth, that he has never left us and we should never be afraid. So keep that in mind. The next time you have a situation that you feel like you have no way out and you feel like that God has left you, no, that he has not. He has given Egypt for you, Ethiopia and Seba. He loves you. You are his. He's always saying that to us. You are mine. Trust and believe that whatever situation that you go through, that you are his and he's already making a way. So you're going to be knocked down. You're going to be talked about. You're going to be denied. You're going to be mistreated. You're going to be disappointed. You're going to be misused. All of the things. But you will not be hurt. Why? Because you are mine. I am with you. And don't think that I will not protect my investment in you. You are mine. I love you. Don't ever think that I am not with you. You are mine and I love you. Trust and believe, my friends, that God sees you and that he's already making a way. And lastly, step five, foster a sense of peace. So we've acknowledged the things, we've intercepted those bad thoughts, we've healed our mind through his word, we trust that he sees us and is already making a way. And now we just need to have a sense of peace. Peace and knowing that through his promises of his word that he has got our back. Like I mentioned in step two about us not being able to um, control certain situations and how we need to make sure that we give those situations that we cannot control to God. 
When we pray to him, we can trust and believe that he has got our back and therefore leaving us with his peace. Jesus tells us in John chapter 14, verse 27, and I'm reading from the New Living Translation. I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So do not be troubled or afraid. And there you go. Jesus letting us know. God's got it. He's got our back. So there's no need to worry about it. Just trust and believe. Put your peace in him. Put your belief in him. And like I said, he'll see you through. That's it. That's it. He's got it. Give it to him. And he gives you back that peace. Go in peace, my friend. Trust and believe that God's got it. And if you know he's got it, then it's already worked out. And that's on Mary had a little lamb with silver and gold. Not putting more on me than I can bear. And before we go, here are some of my other favorite scriptures that can most definitely help you out on your journey. And that's it, good people. I hope you feel better equipped to take on the difficulties or the challenges that try to come your way and combat them with God's word. All right, that's it. Y'all have the knowledge. Go out, teach it to somebody. Do you have a friend or a family member that could most definitely benefit from this lesson? Teach it to them. In Hebrews chapter 10, verses 23 through 25, and I'm reading from the easy read version, Paul tells us we must hold on to the hope we have, never hesitated to tell people about it. We can trust God to do what he has promised. We should think about each other to see how we can encourage each other to show love and do good works. We must not quit meeting together as some are doing. No, we need to keep encouraging each other. This becomes more and more important as you see the day getting closer. So go out, encourage somebody with this lesson. Hopefully that whatever you've gotten from this lesson, you can most definitely impress upon them and we can keep on encouraging each other and you know sharing this message of God's love and faith and that building up, like hopefully I've built you up with this message. All right, that's it, good people. Before we go, let's always end with a prayer. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much for this day. Thank you so much for the individuals that have logged on to receive this message from you. And I pray that it encourages them to want to go out and combat those things that try to weigh them down. You got them in your hands. And know that we love you and will continue to glorify and praise your name. In your darling son Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. All right, good people. If you want to stay connected with me, you can most definitely reach me on my socials. I'm on Instagram at Dr. Underscore Shanta D. That's Dr. D-R lowercase. Everything's lowercase, by the way. D-R underscore Shanta D, all one word. Or you can reach out me via, uh, via email at sd as in dog, w-c-m-e at gmail.com. That's s-d-w-c-m-e at gmail.com. All right, that's it. I hope to see you guys and connect with you guys soon. Peace out.